India is on an urgent mission to go carbon neutral by 2070. The climate crisis is already here. It's not something far out in the future. The transport sector is rallying to answer India's call to electrify the mobility sector. The Indian government has extremely ambitious targets for electrification by 2030. We took this as a vision of participating in a nation-building opportunity. In the new transport paradigm has to be clean, it has to be connected, it has to be charged. This switch will transform the auto sector as we know it. Our objective is that we develop the EV ecosystem in the country with backward-forward linkages. As a new wave of EVs hits Indian roads. So in many ways, designing an EV is you're designing it inside out. So your focus is on the customer, and so it's a human-centric design. And critical infrastructure gets developed. This is a big opportunity to leapfrog and get into the clean mobility space. India will go EV. Really, there is nothing which is stopping this journey from happening. The world is facing unprecedented challenges triggered by climate change large-scale weather events such as heat waves, cyclones and floods are straining our resources and causing the destruction of life, property and infrastructure. The climate crisis is already here. It's not something far out in the future. Over the 50-year period between 1970 and 2019, India, for instance, had a about 478 extreme weather events. India has been feeling the heat quite literally. The country experienced five times the number of heat wave days in 2022 compared to the previous year, forcing schools to either shut down or revise timings. Our coasts are getting battered by cyclones, which are increasing in frequency and intensity. This, combined with rising sea levels, puts metros like Mumbai, Chennai, Kochi and Vishakhapatnam at grave risk. Meanwhile, flash floods and glacier breaches have resulted in the loss of thousands of lives and crores of rupees of damage in the Himalayas. It's not an environmental problem alone. It hits us hard in our economy and in our society. Climate change is driven by global warming caused by the emission of greenhouse gases that trap heat within our atmosphere. The most significant gas is carbon dioxide or CO2. The amount of carbon dioxide in the air has increased by 50% compared to pre-industrial levels leading our planet to warm up by 1.2 degrees Celsius. Our fossil fuel-based power plants, industrial activities, petrol or diesel-powered vehicles on the road, and even agricultural activities contribute to carbon dioxide emissions. But nearly all activities that emit carbon dioxide are also responsible for another huge environmental challenge. Air pollution in India is both a public health problem and a grave economic problem. About 17.8% of deaths in India in 2019 were attributable to air pollution. And a more recent study suggests that India loses about $95 billion or 3% of its GDP thanks to air pollution related impacts. According to IQ Air's 2022 World Air Quality Report, the country is home to six out of the top 10 most polluted cities in the world. To address the twin challenges of pollution and climate change, India has embarked on an ambitious mission to reduce its carbon emissions to net zero by 2070. But what exactly is net zero or carbon neutrality? Our planet has natural carbon sinks, such as forests, oceans, and soil. 
that remove between 9.5 to 11 gigaton of carbon dioxide every year. However, in 2021, we emitted 36 gigaton of carbon dioxide, or nearly three times the Earth's capacity to absorb it. Carbon neutrality simply means that the amount of carbon dioxide we generate equals our planet's capacity to absorb it, or net zero. For this ambitious plan to work, it requires a coordinated effort between public and private sector. See, going to net zero is an imperative. Even if 2070 is a target, the effort sh should be made by everyone concerned to accelerate the path to net zero. And increasingly, as we go into the future, we will feel the need to accelerate in every form and manner. From the corporate sector point of view, I know globally every company and every industry is working towards the technologies that are required to accelerate the net zero transition. The Tata Group, we have launched what is called as Project Alingana. Project Alingana in Sanskrit means embrace. We want to embrace the transition to new energy. And as a group, we have done detailed work to make this transition to net zero by 2045. The bulk of carbon emissions in India stem from energy sector. But within those energy-related emissions, 13% of our emissions come from the transport sector. But 90% of that comes from road transport. If India wants to achieve its carbon neutrality goals, it's imperative to transform the transportation sector. So this is a very key area of uh, transformation for India. Uh, there's a huge political will behind this. India's G20 presidency is a very opportune moment to act as a bridge between the developed and emerging, emerging markets uh, to drive the energy sector. The new transport paradigm has to be clean, it has to be connected, it has to be charged. See, the public at large definitely would like to move towards electric vehicles. Everyone feels responsible towards the net zero commitment. So it is for the industry to make it possible by giving quality products at a price that is affordable so that the customers can adopt the EV journey. And uh, therefore, Tata Motors has to play a big role because it is one of the largest uh, automobile companies in the country. And that essentially would mean that uh, you have to go for accelerated electrification of your portfolio. India is making a massive push for the mainstream adoption of electric vehicles or EVs. The Indian government has extremely ambitious targets for electrification. By 2030, their target is for 30% of private cars to go electric, 70% of all commercial vehicles to go electric. Today, the Indian passenger vehicle industry is at about 3.7 million. By 2030, we can imagine this industry to be of the size of 6 million to 7 million. So we are essentially talking about an electric vehicle market size of nearly 1.5 to 2 million. However, today, privately owned electric four-wheelers on Indian roads constitute about 2% of the market. But while sales of EVs in India may be small, the sector is seeing big spike over the last three years. And if you look at passenger vehicles, we were about three and a half, four thousand vehicles way back in FI20. We landed more than 50,000 vehicles. What explains this sudden spurt in growth? I think the growth of EV sales in India took everyone by surprise. Uh, even market leaders, uh, Tata Motors, which are really dominating the segment, clearly the growth has been driven by them. Uh, you know, 80, 85 plus uh, market share, percent market share, that's just phenomenal. I think the Nexon EV has really been the champion. That's really what's driving the growth. 
uh, and not just uh, incremental but exponential. While it was launched in 2020, work on the Nexon EV started in 2018. Engineers at Tata Motors were tasked with converting the Nexon EVs in just 15 months. You know, initially it was always thought as very futuristic. When uh, we as a group, uh, we took this as a vision of participating in a nation building opportunity, you, you had goosebumps. We started by selling 300 numbers a month uh, in the initial period of the launch of Nexon EV. But as we progressed, we grew the demand to nearly 2,500 to 3,000 a month, which is 10 times jump. You know, there's that old saying in India that jo dikta hai, wo bikta hai, and that's really come true with uh, something like the Nexon. I mean, I would say single-handedly, that's really uh, kind of uh, laid the groundwork for uh, the uh, yeah, EV market and growth. So, newer technologies are always difficult to imbibe initially. But once, you know, people start, you know, kind of relating to it and start imbibing the technology, then the growth is really fast. You look at smartphones. The way they have grown, you know, once they were launched, initial one or two years, maybe it was a little slow, but then it picked up like, you know, kind of anything. When Vanshika Saxena bought the Tigor EV last year, she was inundated with queries from people who were curious about EVs. I am the first person to own EV vehicle in my society and also in my family. And uh, I can say that yes, many people, and also in my office I'll add, and many people are looking forward now to buy EV car in my society, also in my office also. And so early adopters have played a big, big role, you know, in bringing out shortcomings, giving us feedback about where we can improve, and also convincing new customers into, you know, actually taking the plunge, I would say, into the EV mobility. People who are generally in the age bracket of 35 to 45 years, you know, who's the major buying category, you know, they are wanting to buy something new. They would want to flaunt what they own. They want a lot of electronics in their vehicle. And that is another segment, you know, which is driving sales. Early adopters discovered that EVs made zero noise and vibrations which led to lesser travel fatigue. Features like faster pickup of an electric engine also made them fun to drive, leading to a better driving experience than fuel-based vehicles. I think uh, there is definitely a greater buzz. There's no doubt about it. I mean, we're seeing it every day on the road. The EVs on Indian roads and experiences of the early adopters are shifting the buzz around EVs this was evident in India's Auto Expo in 2023. The Auto Expo was more like the electric expo because every manufacturer unveiled electric cars, electric scooters, electric motorcycles. It was all electric, electric, electric. EV is the, uh, the future of mobility, keeping in mind the kind of carbon emission that is happening, the kind of pollution that the industry and the entire world is facing. EV is the answer for that, you know, one, zero emission. There's no benefit of running a diesel vehicle. With the bands coming in regularly, we are, we are stalled for movement. And it's always enviable to see a green number plate just going all day long on the road. I think the most important thing which excites me here is that you're moving out from the high ticket values of the pockets to a very economical segment. However, while there is excitement and growing confidence around EVs, some critical factors still hold consumers back. I have to go around and drive, drive long, long hours, so I'm not confident yet if I will be able to get that infrastructure to recharge, to refuel it at appropriate distances. Whenever I go to any of the stall for the EV, I ask them this thing only, like are they uh, fireproof, shockproof? My, my biggest concern towards is uh, whether this car provide me the range because 
do I need to charge it every 100 kilometer, 200 kilometer? Do I need to do something like that? Cost, range, charging infrastructure and choice are emerging as key concern on people's minds as they contemplate switching to EVs. Auto companies and other stakeholders are making efforts to address these customer concerns. Starting with the upfront cost of EVs. One of the most expensive costs in an EV is its battery pack. If you look at the contribution of battery and the battery pack, you know, it will be closer to 40 to 45 percent of the overall vehicle cost. That's why the price of EVs are typically 30 to 40 percent higher than of internal combustion engines or ICE vehicles. In order to close the price gap between the price of EVs and ICE vehicles, the government of India introduced a policy called Faster Adoption and Manufacturing of Electric Vehicles or FAME. So incentive from FAME and then state governments, they are also adding on to incentive just to ensure that the price almost becomes, it is getting it, uh, close to the match of the ICE vehicles so that people don't have, they don't feel the pinch of switching to the electric vehicles. The GST is only 5%. A lot of state governments have completely waived off the road tax, a registration tax on electric cars. The price gap between a combustion engine and an electric car is not massive. Before this incentive was rolled out, we used to sell some hundred odd cars in Maharashtra. At the peak of the incentive program, we were selling thousand. The new FAME 2 scheme incentivizes auto manufacturers to localize production, which will contribute to bring the manufacturing cost down. If you have to avail the incentive, then you need 50% localization level, which is called domestic value addition. We've also uh, pushed for a production-linked incentive scheme for auto components. Our objective is that we develop the EV electric vehicle ecosystem in the country with backward-forward linkages. We do not want India to be an EV-using nation alone. We want India to be the manufacturing hub of EV. The drive trains, the EV components, the advanced chemistry cell. So that is the national aspiration. That is our vision. We have invested to make batteries, to make uh, printed electronics, motors. All of this, which was earlier being integrated, is now being manufactured, assembled uh, locally. And this provides a boost to component manufacturers who are able to serve auto companies more efficiently. Eventually, localization helps us in having a better control over our supply chain and also offer a lower cost to our end customers and be more and more competitive. So I think this has really helped uh, in totality bring down the price of the electric vehicles on one hand for the consumers. On the other hand, it is driving faster localization in the country through production-linked incentives. Battery prices in India may also see a significant shake-up because of one critical discovery in early 2023. We've recently seen the discovery of 5.9 million tons of lithium reserves by the Geological Survey of India in Jammu and Kashmir. All this will really bring down the cost of batteries. Many customers consider the total cost of operating a car. This includes the cost of purchasing a vehicle as well as spends on fuel and maintenance. The cost of charging an EV is lower than filling up your tank with fuel. Plus, because electric engines have no moving parts, EVs are easier to maintain. There's also a convenience factor when you have an EV. Uh, and, you know, one assumes you have uh, your own charging infra. And when you have that, uh, frankly, the convenience, the fact that you never have to fill, fill up at all, maintenance is very low. It's like, you know, put in this initial amount of money and then it's uh, just almost free after that. 
we see that the lifetime costs are about between anywhere between 13 to 40 percent or more than 40 percent cheaper for owners of these vehicles, especially in the two wheeler, three wheeler segment. Divya Dhakarwal, who has been driving the Nexon EV since 2022, has noticed a marked difference in expenditure. So, uh, if I just talk about my monthly expenditure, you know, so it has from 25,000 a month, it has gone down to some uh, maybe 3-4 thousand a month. While falling, battery prices and policy support to contribute to reducing the price gap between EVs and fuel-based vehicles, auto companies are also developing EVs with smaller footprints that come with a lower price tag. But this brings up new challenges like range that threatens to slam the brakes on the adoption of EVs. Next, we see how Tata Motors is addressing customer concerns regarding range and availability of charging infrastructure. government policies and innovations by auto companies bring down the cost of purchasing an EV, there are other challenges such as range anxiety that still needs to be addressed. Divya Dhakarwal drove a fuel-based automatic SUV when he shifted from Bangalore to Gurgaon. But ever since I moved here, my uh, the distance that I drove in a month increased substantially. Since I'm from Hisar, so my home is about 200 kilometers from Gurgaon. So that, uh, like twice or thrice at least in a month, I go there. And then out here also for my work, normally we travel all across NCR. But I always had this doubt in my mind, what about the highway? If I'm going to my hometown, which is about 200 kilometers, what then? If there is some, you know, maybe some detour or some, some traffic jam in between, what if, you know, we have to stop, right? So I was just waiting, you know, for something to come within the budget with a good kilometer range. EV range is the total number of kilometers that an electric car can travel when it has been charged to 100%. So uh, larger batteries uh, tend to give you more range, but at the same time, uh, larger batteries are more weight on the car. In a cost-conscious country like India, conversion of ICE vehicle into an EV is a way to keep costs down. This throws up several challenges when converting a small format ICE car into an EV with a battery with good usable range. From a development perspective, it meant that you still took an ICE architecture and you converted the floor in a manner that it allowed you to package more battery and deliver higher range. What we see today is that in city conditions, people do not drive more than 35 to 40 kilometers on a daily basis. Therefore, if you are able to meet battery that needs to be charged once a week or at best one and a half times a week, then you've sorted out most of these problems. The Nexon EV starts with 30.2 kilowatt power battery pack, which provides a range of over 300 kilometers. But converting vehicles like the Tigor and especially the Tiago through new challenges at the development teams at Tata Motors. You really don't see too many hatchbacks coming as EV and also typically with EVs, the cars need to be large to accommodate large batteries. So that's why the challenges are there in hatchback. The Tiago is an example of trying to convert a small format car into an electric vehicle. And therefore, uh, you see, it had to be the right level of energy on the car in order to give you a 200 kilometers real life usable uh, uh, range. So uh, we went ahead with a split battery. We created an integrated unified box which allowed us to not only improve in during the automation that we were going to have, but also make sure that the entire box can be integrated together, leading to uh, less of a problem in manufacturing, as well as in terms of laying down the cables and internal to the battery. Teams at Tata Motors and their battery supplier, Taco, also relied heavily on three years of experience and data on battery usage. Who 
over these three years, we have collected a lot of data from the end market, end consumers in terms of how they use their vehicles, how they drive and they charge their vehicles. This data was used to fine tune the software, which allows engineers to deliver optimal vehicle performance and more range. The software has a very important role in terms of being able to extract the right level of performance, range and optimization uh, parameters. It's enabled us to look very precisely at how cars tend to get operated and therefore pull back on certain limits that we may have set before. It is the confidence of this data that's enabled us to do this. But the benefit to the customer is that with the same car and an update on the software, they are able to realize better range and better performance without sacrificing even a little bit on any of the safety aspects. Tata Motors also updated its best-selling model, Nexon EV, to boost its range. This meant making significant adjustments to the vehicle's floor to accommodate the larger battery size without compromising on interior ergonomics. And that's what we've been able to do with a modified floor on the 40 kilowatt hour version of the Nexon, which is uh, becoming a very high level of acceptance within the market today. We wanted to bust myths, and that's where the team came up on this idea that why don't we take the Nexon EV Max to the highest motorable road in the world. Take it higher than any electric car, not just in India, but in the world has gone. And that's where we struck upon this idea of taking the EV Max to the Umlingla Pass. The EV Max went up there, and it went up there surprisingly easy. Tata launched Nexon EV with a claimed range of 430 kilometers. So if I'm driving locally, I just have to, even if I'm driving 50 kilometers in a day, I just have to charge it once in a week. Also, the range, the range part, if I want to talk about, the range that Tigor claims is 306 kilometers. But I have driven it to 326 kilometers also. But battery safety and range address one user concern. The other side of the coin is the availability of charging solutions. It has to start at, you know, the place which is home itself, because 95% of the time, people are going to charge their car at home. So first we have to sort out all the bottlenecks and constraints that we have in terms of installing the chargers at home. So what we do is as soon as uh, someone goes to the uh, Tata Motors uh, centers to book a vehicle, uh, we come to know that where the vehicle will be uh, utilized, uh, what is the address of the user, we immediately connect with the building or the area that they stay. What we do is uh, we not only provide the charger, but also get them the necessary approval for uh, getting the electricity connection, as also providing them a separate meter wherever possible, so that they can take the benefit of lower uh, EV rates, which is available for most of the discounts. When the Nexon EV was first introduced in the market, it came with 3.3 kilowatt slow charger. Such chargers take anywhere from 6 to 12 hours to charge an electric four-wheeler depending on its battery size. But eventually, auto companies like Tata Motors started offering home chargers with a higher 7.2 kilowatt capacity. The difference is the time that it takes to charge your car. So slow charger would take some 11 to 12 hours to charge it from 0 to 100% is what I know. And uh, my fast charger would take about five and a half hours to six hours maximum to charge it from 0 to 100. However, people living in high rises often face difficulties in installing chargers since their parking spot would be far from the meter room. I think today sometimes housing societies are the biggest deterrent because, uh, you know, without that people will not buy uh, an EV. And clearly, if it was made easy, you'd, in these high rises, you'd have hundreds of people maybe getting EVs. The government is introducing policies to resolve some of these issues. Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, if you look at it, they amended the building bylaws for providing EV charging points for the residents and commercial places. 
For some users, Tata Power drew a longer wire to install the charging point. I had two on and off buttons. One is at the basement and one is on my floor only. So when I uh, charge my car, at that time it shows that how much time it will take to fully charge. So first time it gets auto cut, but still because if I had to close it, so I can close it from my uh, floor only. I do not have to go down to uh, switch off the charger. But this approach became unfeasible in some cases. So, Tata Power approached societies with a novel approach, setting up EV charging zones within larger societies. When we started uh, putting these uh, charges in large building complexes and societies, there was a lot of resistance because this was something new. And uh, all of them were a little apprehensive that if you put a charger, what will it lead to? But I think over a period of time, we have found that uh, most of these uh, societies have come back and they have been very supportive. While home charging is the primary mode of charging, many people use vehicles to travel between cities regularly. But more importantly, everyone wants the freedom to drive long distances when they want. The question is, do we have enough chargers on the road? Building charging infrastructure presents a chicken and egg problem. Companies won't install chargers unless there are enough EVs on the road. And there won't be enough EVs on the road until people see there are enough charging points. But India is moving swiftly to boost its charging network. But in the interim phase, what we are doing is to use the FAME2 scheme, which has incentivized setting up of uh, almost 3,000 charging stations across 68 cities. We've uh, pushed for highways, expressways. Today, there are over 5,000 public chargers installed across India. Apart from power utilities, a host of startups and oil and gas companies are working actively to expand this network. This is encouraging early adopters take EVs out for long-distance travelling already. In fact, some users, like Vanshika Saxena, evaluated how she would charge her EV while driving from Delhi to her hometown in Lucknow. When we used to travel to Lucknow once in a month, so when we were travelling through petrol car, we went across the petrol stations and there we found that EV chargers were installed, were already installed, especially in that Delhi-Lucknow highway. A large number of chargers along highways are strategically located at food malls and dhabas. This allows travellers to charge their EVs as they take breaks along their journey. Sirish Chandran, who heads Evo India magazine, decided to experience what it was like to drive across the length of India in an EV firsthand. driving from Kashmir to Kanyakumari in a Nexon EV. He used only public charging infrastructure to get to his destination. Everybody has this big thing that there is no infra and where do you charge it and all of that. So this drive actually shows that the electric car, it can cover long distances without a problem. Tata Motors and Tata Power also launched an app that streamlined the public charging experience. Easy Charge app was uh, jointly developed along with TCS and Tata Motors. The purpose of the app was to provide the flexibility and customer experience to the consumer in deciding uh, where the chargers are, what type of chargers are, and how they can use the charger uh, and make the payment, which is a seamless experience for them. The reduction of charging anxiety has another curious impact. Wherever we are seeing charging infra coming up, range anxiety is going down and people are ready to adopt a lower range product. The push to boost charging infrastructure is spearheaded by power utilities like Tata Power, oil and gas companies, and a host of private startups. India's growing charging infrastructure may well set off a virtuous cycle of EV growth in India. Setting up the stage for the entry of more and exciting new EV models. 
up next, we'll see the new EVs that India can expect in the coming few years. India is on the cusp of switching to EVs. EV-friendly policies. Innovations in battery technology that's boosting range. And a massive push to expand charging infrastructure. The ecosystem is removing key barriers that stand in the way of EV adoption. However, there are still too few EVs in the market to choose from. There are some people who feel that the market has to grow first before we give choice. But we are very clear that it is a choice that is going to cause and actually give a lot of a boost to the growth of the EV industry. Today you have a handful of products in the market competing against hundreds of products in the ice world. So you have to start matching the number of choices, you know, and mimic what is there in the ice world. And then only consumer is going to get the confidence and the comfort that they have options to choose from. While many automakers have gradually announced plans to launch EVs in India, Tata Motors is committing heavily in this sector. The company announced that it will have 10 EV models in the market by 2025. This includes the Nexon EV, Tigor EV and Tiago EV, which are already available in the market. In addition, the company announced three new EVs at the Auto Expo 2023. We should ensure that they are coming at different affordability points. It is coming in different body styles and you are giving different driving range options because somebody wants to just use in the city, but somebody wants to do more longer drives. I think to me the fundamental thing is there's more choice available, more people will consider it and buy it, you know, so because I think you need uh, a broader range of mass market models for, uh, you know, EVs to really, uh, you know, go mainstream. Encouraged by the success of the first wave of EVs, auto companies like Tata Motors are developing vehicles that have been designed from the ground up as pure EVs. At the Auto Expo, the company showcased one such vehicle, a Vinya. With this design, for instance, by moving the wheels outboard and creating this uh, large footprint, what it does is it gives the designers the opportunity to create a very unique silhouette. And that's actually something very unique that's to an EV. That also then lends itself to a silhouette that is fundamentally aerodynamic, which is part of what an EV is all about. While Avinya is packed with technology, the designers took effort to move it in the background and instead emphasize human well-being. Well, the most important considerations designing an EV, uh, which we actually gave ourselves, is, uh, is creating peace of mind. That's fundamentally what we're doing. We're not designing the product, we're designing the experience. So in many ways, designing an EV is you're designing it inside out. So your focus is on the customer, and so it's a human-centric design. Our mission is to create uh, an ambience of wellness and health. Today, people buy cars only because of the last screen, but we are going to go completely the other way. We are saying that there's enough of screens that you look at. When you drive, just enjoy the drive and don't look at screens. We're going to put in place uh, voice-activated controls. Introducing EVs at various price points and features is also allowing fleets to transition to EVs. There has been a flurry of development in the last couple of years, which signal a massive shift in the transportation sector. E-commerce players like Amazon and Flipkart have announced plans to electrify their delivery vehicles. Gurgaon-based startup Blue Smart is betting big on demand for electric cabs. Meanwhile, Uber recently inked a deal with Tata Motors to introduce 25,000 EVs into their fleet. One of the things that will actually significantly increase 
the uptake i believe is the promotion and uh, growth of ev based uh, fleet services and cab services so the more consumers use that they get more familiar with the vehicle they are traveling in and it might just become the the first choice when they choose to buy the next vehicle meanwhile some banks are stepping in to enable faster adoption of evs offering attractive loan schemes for ev buyers such as 100% on road financing all this is contributing to a rapid growth in this sector which very few could have predicted i don't think everybody had the conviction that india will go uh, ev the way we have seen and nobody had anticipated that it will be such a fast ramp up which we've seen over the last 3 years what we have seen in the last 3 years is a tremendous interest the success of tigar or nexan is clearly a testament to the support that we are seeing across the board towards ev adoption so i'm pretty confident with the right product and with the right cost structure we should be able to make a huge transition towards electric vehicles in the coming years the promise of growth is making the indian ev sector favorable for investments you know not only banks multi developmental financial institution asset owners asset managers they all need to play a pivotal role in building this sector and attracting lucrative return confidence of private equity players in indian market has gone up multifold if you look at the quantum investments that have been pumped in the ev industry is significant in 2021 The TPG Rice Climate Fund made an investment in Tata Motors which led the automaker to create a new subsidiary. TPG Rice uh, has invested a billion dollar into a, a company which is Tata Passenger Electric Mobility and hence we've announced that we will be investing 2 billion dollars over the next few years across our EV programs. With this 1 billion dollar investment it secures most of the funds which we require. Uh, to electrify uh, really there is nothing which is stopping uh, this uh, journey from happening vision in 2030 is not by in the sky it is real if you really drive electrification if you bring choices at different affordability points if you are able to have decent you know level of charging infra in the country 30% from a demand perspective is not a challenge so for us actually i don't think the risk is that of whether uh, india will go ev or not india will definitely go ev the question is how fast will it go ev i can definitely recommend the electric car to be your single car the one car in your garage it will give you peace of mind it will also give you joy of driving we've already seen that the kind of customer interest in in EVs are immense i think both the country and tata motors will overachieve these targets much earlier than 2030 is the kind of signals we are getting and for us uh, this is a big opportunity to leapfrog and get into the clean mobility space but to achieve that the next few years are critical for india to go ev in the next 4 5 years it will be a period of maturing this category like today people have uh, the confidence in cars because of the petrol pumps that they see same level of confidence uh, i see on the other side of these 5 years so charging infra would have matured i would see more and more participation of suppliers as well as oems in this whole electrification space which will bring plethora of choices for the consumers and therefore greater confidence of moving towards this if india does achieve its ev goals for 2030 and beyond the implications will be immense because the stake couldn't be higher
you know, India um, has targets of 30% sales of electric vehicles by 2030. That in and of itself would reduce emissions by about 16 million tons of carbon dioxide. Imagine if all of Delhi's vehicles, buses, trucks, cars, two-wheelers, three-wheelers, all changed to electric. Our estimation, based on modeled source apportionment studies, suggests that the PM 2.5 levels would drop by about 12%. The coming EV revolution is a critical step in building such a world. As engineers innovate to build EVs for every need, as companies rush to scale up their capabilities, and build the infrastructure that strengthens public confidence. India will go EV. Contributing to fulfill its ambitious vision and building a world that nurtures our health and environment.